G'day, my name's Adam Hills. Welcome to Spicks and Specs, the music quiz show whose ears are still ringing from last night's gig. Our two team captains each and every week are the inimitable Alan Bro and the indubitable Miff Warhurst. <laughs> Alan's first guest tonight plays drums, vibraphone and keyboards, has written music for TV and film and has performed with The Moodus, The Coral Snakes, The Dave Graney Show and is currently in The Lurid Yellow Mist. Please welcome Claire Moore. <laughs> Alan's second team member tonight is a comedian and actor who starred in the hit film Kenny and made his debut this year in a stage musical. He's gone from toilet rolls to guys and dolls. Here's Shane Jacobson. <laughs> Miss first guest tonight hosted the ABC TV series Flashes, had hits with the songs Touch Me, Love Fever and Gloria, has performed alongside Stevie Wonder and once had morning tea at Michael Jackson's house. <laughs> Please welcome to the show Ray Burgess. <laughs> Miss final guest is a comedian who was also the opening act for the first tour of Canadian crooner Michael Bublé. Uh, sadly, she was rejected from the second tour when she suggested it should be called Show Us Your Bublés. <laughs> Please welcome Michelle Laurie. <laughs> now, before we do get on with the show, I want to do a bit of a comparison right now between uh, Claire mm. in the 1974-75 years mm. and Ray in the 1974-75 years. We're going to start with Claire. Mm. What were you doing what in 1974-75 musically? I was, I, I was uh, probably 14, 15. Uh, I, I was playing drums at the time at school. I learnt to play because of a nun called Sister Janet Mead who wanted all the girls to learn how to play rock instruments in particular. So Sister Janet Mead who sang the Lord's Prayer. In, uh, that's correct, Which yes. was number one pretty much around the world, I'm fairly sure. Yes, well, actually, I happen to have something here that proves that I have an invitation to the gold record presentation, oh. 1975, uh, Festival Records and Tapes. And uh, tapes. And tapes. <laughs> oh, they almost ruined rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, can't look at that. Yeah, it's sure. absolutely amazing. This is... Oh, and look at this. Sister Janet's new LP, A Rock Mass, will be previewed yeah. to those present. <laughs> so no, Miff, yeah, not the... Rock mass. I'm just wondering what a roadie at a rock mass is like. Wow. <laughs> do they have, really, do they have their cassocks really high so when they need them, you can see a bit of holy crack? <laughs> they go in the back for communion and go, the wine and the bread's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Out of the truck. <laughs> On the it stuff sticks to the roof here, man. <laughs> so, Claire, 74, 75, playing with Sister Janet Mead. Mm -hmm. uh, let's have a look at Ray from 74, 75, appearing on what I believe is the first colour episode ever of Countdown. I want that jacket. Just watch the hands of the kids here. Oh. And he does a flinch. <laughs> Fantastic. That's yeah, nice yeah. Nice. Yeah. really special work. No offence, but you'd pay good money to be touched like that now, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, our first game tonight is called Know Your Product. <laughs> your choices tonight are the years 1957, Ooh. 1967, 1977 oh, nice. and 1987. Uh, Alan can pick the first topic tonight. Well, I had a computer like that, so 1977. <laughs> good enough reason, Miv? Um, 1967? Mm, yeah. Yes. Yep. Cool. Okie dokes. Uh, we'll start with 1977. Everyone on your buses? Let's play Specs and Specs. Your first question for one point. In 1977, which Aussie rock band toured the US on the back of their classic album, Let There Be Rock? Yes. Um, ACDC. It was ACDC. <laughs> well done. Next question worth two points. At the height of disco, the Saturday Night Fever soundtrack was released. Name two songs from the soundtrack. <laughs> not... Oh! oh. English. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> um, so firstly we have to work out um, not released as singles I suspect would be the answer to that. Oh. Not um, written by the Bee Gees. Oh, not written by the Bee Gees. Oh. You know, we should have really oh. waited, shouldn't we? <laughs> we have to give it a go now. So, I reckon you're right, it's not written by the Bee Gees. Mm, mm. Let's um, go with that one. Okay. Um, so what wasn't written by the Bee Gees then? Uh, the Hustle? Is that what it... No, the... Do the Hustle. Do the Hustle. No, not on the album. Oh, okay, well, not on the album. Yeah, and we know that. We're just going for songs yeah. that okay. aren't yep. on the album. Cool. So now... Mm -hmm. so I'll give you question. one more guess and then I'll throw it over to the other side. Not this guy. Staying no, Alive. Uh, staying Alive. Yeah. St so we just go to Staying Alive to get one. No, it wasn't Staying Alive, oh. so I'm going to open it up to this side. The rest oh. of the question was, uh, name two songs from the soundtrack uh, not recorded by the Bee Gees. Oh. So you're on the right track. Um, Walter Murphy, Fifth of Beethoven? Oh, yes. A fifth yeah. of Beethoven. 
Boogie shoes. shoes. Boogie shoes, yeah, Casey and the Sunshine Band, yes? Yeah. I would have also accepted More Than a Woman by Tabaret. Oh, uh, yes. If I Can't Have You, Yvonne Elliman. Yeah, Disco you. Inferno by Tramps was actually there. Oh. Uh, and a whole bunch of other songs as well. Right, finally for three points. Have a listen to these three top charting singles from 1977. Wait till the end, name all three artists. You. Yes. Wings. Wings, Mull of Kintyre. Yes. Um, Debbie Boone. You Debbie Boone. Debbie life. Boone. You yeah. light up my life. And the Bee Gees. No. What? Wasn't the Bee Gees in the middle? Someone on this side wanted to go? Andy Gibb. It was Andy Gibb. Oh. Oh. Well done. Paul McCartney had so many massive hits, including Mull of Kintyre, uh, that the Guinness Book of World Records basically invented a new award for him. After gold, silver and platinum, he had so many that they actually presented him with a rhodium disc, which is a metal that's even more precious than gold, silver or platinum. Oh, wow. How's that? Well, wow. the, yeah, but the Guinness Book of Records invented how many pegs can you put on your face as well. Yeah. Right? Yeah, good point. <laughs> They're not picky. Yeah. Well, there they are, because he's that guy who ate an airplane. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, bit by bit. Oh, yes. Yeah, and he, does, he now does ads for um, toothpaste for sensitive teeth. Oh. <laughs> Ow. Ow. Did he eat the whole thing? Yeah, an entire airplane has been through them. He's an idiot. And hopefully it wasn't a Qantas <laughs> plane, because they are hugely irregular, and he probably hasn't been to the toilet for about ten years. So, you know, if there are people from the Guinness Book of World Records, we do like what you did. Yes, creating rhodium for Paul McCartney. And uh, a similar occurrence took place for Rob Millsy Mills' latest album, which I believe went carpet. <laughs> On to 1967, your first question for one point. Uh, in 1967, the Easy Beats reached number 16 in the US and number 5 in the UK with which song? Yes. Friday, Friday on my mind. mind. Friday on my mind it is for two points. In 1967 as well, The Doors famously performed Light My Fire on the Ed Sullivan Show. He said, but couldn't get much higher, even yep. though he was told he couldn't sing those lyrics. The yeah. rest of the question was, what word were they asked to change and what did they change it to? And you answered them both. Mm. Two points. Ah. Finally, for three points, in 1967, the Beatles released their eighth album, Sgt Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. For three points, name three of the non-Beatles featured on the cover of the album. Oh. Yes. Uh, Jimi Hendrix? Uh, no, I can't find Jimi Hendrix here. Stalin? Uh, no. Do you want to have a third guess? Marilyn Monroe? Oh, Marilyn Monroe. Uh, yes, Marilyn Monroe is in there. Which means I'll throw the other two over to this side. Uh, Karl Marx. Yes, Karl Marx. Oh, Excellent. Right. Um, Gandhi. No, Gandhi's not here either. The other people featured include Bob Dylan, Mae West, Lenny oh. Bruce, Dylan Thomas, W.C. Fields and a whole bunch of others. That's one point each. Now, while we're talking album covers, very excited to have Ray here for a number of reasons. Uh, one of which is I can now tick your name <gasps> off the list of names on my uh, Ripper... Is it uh, Ripper 77? Uh, Ripper 75. Oh. Uh, let's see, we've had uh, Sherbet and therefore Daryl Braithwaite. Uh, we've had Status Quo, John English, uh, Richard Clapton. I can now tick off uh, Ray Burgess as well. <gasps> Get to write your own names on there? Did they just wheel some mole in and you all just. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how that works? No, Bring in the mole. <laughs> that was actually, I think, the first one of those type of compilations that came out. Right. Uh, and it sold something like 400,000 copies at the time, which was unheard of. And um, they've been doing them ever since. Yeah, we had a copy of this when I was growing up. My brother bought it, when I think, in the 70s when I was little. But I think I only got onto it around about 1984. So I was a big fan in 1984. Oh, did your mum I'm embarrassed now. No. <laughs> did your mum let you look at that? Yeah. Little baby myth? Yeah. <laughs> well, Ripper said... Is that what they called it? <laughs> no. <laughs> Every time I... You keep your texters away from our little baby myth. <laughs> thank you. At the end of the first round, the scores are... Miff, Ray, Michelle on five points. Alan, Claire, Shane out in front. Six points. Yeah. <laughs> Each team will be given three artists and three interesting facts. You have to match the artist to the fact. Uh, Alan, Claire and Shane, yep. your stars are 80s pop sensation and American Idol judge Paula Abdul, <laughs> one half of 60s duo Sonny and Cher, Sonny Bono, 
a 90s one-hit wonder, the man who sang Ice Ice Baby, Vanilla Ice. You have to match them to their religions, which are Born Again Christian, oh. Judaism, mm. and Scientology. <laughs> <laughs> And here comes Tom Cruise now in his new jet. <laughs> um, uh, look, Paula Abdul's already tiny, isn't she? Yeah, yeah she like is. Five foot two or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. I th so I think she's going to be a Scientologist. They all seem to yes, be really... so. <laughs> they all... Well, they're all really little. Well, they've got a few okay, well, they're not all really little. OK, I'm generalising here. Little, though. Sunny Bono is little. But mm. she's probably really rich. <laughs> you have to be rich, don't you? To be a Scientologist? Mm. Yeah, I think so, because fuel for UFOs is just astronomical. <laughs> His, his name could have been bon Bonofsky. Bonofsky or something like that. So he, he could <laughs> he could also be a Scientologist. Um, I think Paula Abdul would be Scientologist. I think so because it's incredibly famous. Uh, they tend to be Very fine famous. comfort there. Sunny and um, Vanilla. I don't think I don't think they would be. Um, well, I think Vanilla I think Ice. Sunny is... Bono would be uh, Jewish. Okay. Perhaps. Yeah. yeah. And that makes Vanilla Ice born again. again Christian. I can tell you, you've got one out of three. Oh! oh OK. OK, now I know exactly what's wrong here. <laughs> <laughs> Paula Abdul's a Scientologist, Vanilla Ice is a Scientologist, and Sonny Bono is a Scientologist. <laughs> the correct answers are Paula Abdul is Jewish. Oh! Sonny Bono was a Scientologist. Oh! Uh, and Vanilla Ice is a born again Christian. One point out of the three. Well done. Yeah. Miff, Ray and Michelle, oh, your artists okay. are the king of rock and roll who died on a toilet, Elvis. Oh, the man who got dumped cool. by Britney Spears and thanks his lucky stars on a daily basis, Justin Timberlake. <laughs> and the everlasting folk singer who became electric, Bob Dylan. You have to match them to the items of theirs being offered up on eBay, which are a high school yearbook, a tooth, oh. and uneaten French toast. Oh. Well, clearly, if the toast was Elvis's, it wouldn't actually be there anymore because he would have eaten it, I'm fairly certain. Yes. So, so I, I reckon toast rounds out, you know, takes out Elvis. I reckon it's JT's toast. Yeah, recent. Yep. Yes, that's the sort of thing teenage girls will pinch off a table in a cafe. Mm -hmm. and, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. um, Elvis's... A high school yearbook, but surely that'd be in the, you know, in Graceland on display. So, yeah. Like that sort of stuff wouldn't be up on it. Did anybody. he go to high school? I don't know. Yeah, every day he left class there was an announcement. <laughs> <laughs> Elvis had left the school. Bang. Wouldn't that be awesome if you like swanning into grade nine? Did it? <laughs> so wouldn't that be cool? Okay, we'll go JT Toast, Bob Dylan's tooth. Are we happy with Elvis's high school yearbook? Happy enough, babe. All right, uh, just like Alan's team, you ended up with one correct. Uh, Elvis's tooth is available online. The half-eaten plate of French toast did belong to Justin Timberlake, so you got that correct. Work. You can buy Bob Dylan's high school yearbook. Oh! Ah, wow. that is the one that is uh, also up there on eBay. So, uh, one point for Miff's team. Yay. Well done. I have no idea how Elvis's tooth has ended up online, but someone is, is claiming to have it. Uh, I used to sell teeth. What? I was a medical and dental uh, sales rep for some time, and I used to sell teeth. Dentures. Acrylic teeth. Anybody. De not the dentures. You have to get that. You don't just go up and go, hey, do you want a whole denture? I think it'll fit. <laughs> <laughs> but I used to sell uh, dental supplies. D wow. Door to door? No. Wow. <laughs> Oh, I'm selling teeth, but I'm not missing any. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> now. Thank hey, God you're here. <laughs> that really hurt. Wait till you hear the price. <laughs> I'd love to think somewhere in Australia there are people watching Kenny in a cinema going, he sold me teeth. I know when he works with toilets. <laughs> This round, the scores are Miff, Ray, Michelle are on six points. Alan, Claire, Shane out in front, seven points. Each team will hear short snippets of songs. Without taking notes, you have to identify as many of those songs as you can. Alan, Claire and Shane are up first. Listen carefully, here are your song snippets.
Money, money. I'm still dancing. I'm, I mean, yeah, Elton John. Elton John. I'm still standing. Standing. Still standing. Oh, there's an REM one in there. REM, yeah. yeah. Um, the um, automatic for the people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow, it's like knowing everything around the answer. <laughs> and yet the answer is still shrouded in mystery for me. Um, and there was that. The man in the moon. Man oh, in the moon. moon. Nice work. And there was the. Oh, yeah. Is that, is that out of um, Risky Business? Is that the one? You actually said the name of it, so I'm going to accept that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, just, you, know, you just can't stop yourself now. Uh, and there was one other song in there that I haven't heard the title of yet. I don't think you will hear the title of it, to be perfectly no. honest. <laughs> Anyone on this side? Um, no. We... <sighs> All right, let's have a listen back to them. It was Oh Yeah by Yellow. Bring it on home to me, Sam oh. Cooke. Oh. I'm still standing, Elton John. Man on the Moon, R.E.M. Moni Moni, that was a Billy Idol version. Four points to Alan Clare and Shirley. Mifra and Michelle, here are your five songs. Song two, yep. what's new, pussy cat, baby the, love, you're, you're the, the voice, voice. Yep. and um, oh, I had that one. Um, it was the B 52s, but it wasn't Rock Lobster. It was the other one. Um, what's the other B 52 song? There isn't one. <laughs> yes, there is. <laughs> yes, there is. The private Idaho. Oh, and she let's have a not. listen back to them. <laughs> what's new, pussy cat, Tom Jones. You're the voice, John Farnham. Baby Love, The Supremes. <laughs> Private Idaho, B-52s. Oh, Song 2 by Blur, five points. Oh, yeah. Yeah. At the end of that round, the scores are... Miff, Ray, Michelle are on 11 points. They have caught up to Alan, Claire, Shane, also on 11 points. <laughs> One member of each team will be singing well-known <laughs> songs using the words of an unrelated piece of text. Your teammates have to identify the songs. Claire will be singing first for Alan and Shane. And you'll be taking your lyrics from My Steve by Terry Irwin. Uh, those are your songs. Don't show your teammates, ladies and gentlemen. Claire Moore. Yeah. I noticed the crocodiles before I noticed the man. There was a whole line of crocodilians, alligators, and one big salty. <laughs> it's because I love you. Yes, that's exactly the name of the song. Oh, that's good. <laughs> it's because I love you by the great masters of princes. No, 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 sorry. No, I'm just talking to Ellie. You go, it's because I love you. <laughs> anyway, let's. <laughs> oh, isn't that lovely? Next song, please. Go. Okay. <laughs> Steve instinctively dodged each of the snake strikes, but was now struck for something to put the snake in, and it was becoming more aggressive. Finally, one of me mates bought over our buses, Esky. He said, I dumped out all his sandwiches. He was one cranky snake. <laughs> Cheers and wonderment of his cricket teammates. Steve caught another half a dozen red bellies. No, no, we've got nothing. Anyone on this side? No, but that is as good as anything Bindi and the Croc Man have got. <laughs> <laughs> it's Love is the Drug by Roxy oh! Music. Oh, yes! Final song, please, Claire. Steve explained the social hierarchy. Each group had its own oh. territory. Females would inhabit a specific area to nest. Uh, yes. Starman by David Bowie. Yay. Yes, it most certainly is. Starman by David Bowie. Good luck. A round of applause for Before we go on with the show, you told us that you great, you yeah. did a, like played a gig on the Cocos well, Islands. Well, yes, we were invited to play on the Cocos Islands, which is like six hours out into the Indian Ocean from Perth. 
Yep. And it was a beautiful place, very lovely, and uh, we played to um, 120 people at their food and wine festival. How many people on the Cocos Island? It's 120. <laughs> I don't reckon we've ever had anyone on the show that has had the entire population of somewhere come to their gig. There you go. Yes, we're very proud of that. Yeah. Indeed. And apparently uh, Specs and Specs is played on the Cocos Islands. Oh, yes, yes, they do get it. They get Channel 2 over there. And uh, SBS, Channel 2. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I should have mentioned. Oh, no. We, we, we know there are other networks. Oh. Uh, <laughs> hello to all 120 people on the Cocos Islands. I uh, hope you're enjoying Specs and Specs. Bye. <laughs> Ray, you'll be singing for Miff and Michelle. Come on, Ray. And you'll be taking your lyrics from Arnold's Fitness for Kids. Oh, what we do? By Arnold Schwarzenegger oh, no. with Charles Gaines. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, oh, Ray Burgess. Ray. Now, Ray, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little bit frightened that you can't perform unless you've got an audience touching you. A bit long in the tooth these days. Oh, you still got the dimples, I love. Thanks, sweetheart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. As small children, we are all naturally flexible. But as we get older, we oh, begin. Right there, well, I'll look out my way. Ah, hey, ah, hey, hey, hey. Every day. It's, it's getting, getting closer. Every day. Every day, every day by Buddy Holly. Hey. Okay. Lay an eight foot long two by four inch plank out on the ground or the floor and practice walking it and placing it foot directly in front of the other <laughs> without coming off the plank then practice walking the plank sideways by crossing one foot over the other oh it's mac tonight make the knife make the knife What's it's it? not mac the knife no <laughs> this side don't you rain on my parade don't rain on my parade barbara oh, streisand well poached well done. All right, our final song, please, Ray. <clears throat> Kids who are physical fit at the lower risk for disease, such as intestinal disease, ulcers, yes, and high-stress kids get ulcers. Kids who are physically fit are at a lower risk for diseases, which is the leading cause of death and disability. Something tells me I'm... <laughs> <laughs> Something good by Herman's Hermits. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Ray Burgess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> At the end of that round, the scores are Mick, Ray, Michelle are on 13 points. One point behind Alan Claire Shane, 14 points. Yeah. All right, it's time for the final countdown. Yes. Teams, hands on your buzzers. No, one point off. for a correct answer, one point off for a wrong answer. Your questions start now. Which ABBA album features a helicopter? <laughs> Arrival. Uh, arrival it is, Miff. Complete this album title. Whatever people say I am... Yes? That's what I'm not. Uh, by the Arctic Monkeys. Oh, well done, I... Miff. Have a listen to this. Name the song. Oh, oh, yes. I know who you are. It's Feist Simple. and yeah. one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four by Feist. Who had the 1964 hit Ferry Cross the Mersey? Jerry, the... Yes. Jerry and the Pacemakers. Jerry and the Pacemakers. Oh, sorry, what was Hungarian composer Bartok's first name? Bella. Bella, it was. Nice work, Miff. Green Gartside was the lead singer. Yes? Scrooty Politi. Oh, my God, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Who was the first woman to shoot a Rolling Stone magazine cover? Um, um, Paul McCartney. Linda McCartney. Linda McCartney. Linda Eastman, uh, but she became Linda McCartney, I'll give you that. Linda McCartney, knee Eastman. Eastman. <laughs> <laughs> for your final point, if you were playing the Indonesian instrument, the pitungalong, where would you stick it? <laughs> I reckon... Yes? The mouth. Uh, in your nose. It's oh, a traditional oh, Indonesian oh, nose oh, flute. No. That was the final question. So, at the end of tonight's show, the final scores were... Oh, oh. Alan Claire Shane ended up on 17 points. Miff Ray Michelle won the day with 18 points. Oh. Would you please thank all our guests for tonight? Claire Moore, Shane Jacobson, Ray Burgess and Michelle Laurie. <laughs> and of course, our two team captains, Alan Bro and Miff Warhurst. Yeah. We leave you tonight with a clip called The Happy Hour Brigade. It was made by a group of Aussie musicians living in LA in the 70s and features Brian Cadd, Russell Morris, Daryl Cotton, Rick Springfield, Steve Kipner, 
Billy Thorpe, and of course, Ray Burgess. <laughs> this is the Happy Hour Brigade. Thanks for watching Spicks and Specs. My name's Adam Hills. Good night, Australia.